No, I mean, this is run by PBS, left, very leftist, very, very leftist. You know, they, they probably came down with the intention to try to say that we're a terrorist, dangerous terrorist group here in the Boconos and these, you know. And so, you know, when we, it was interesting, by the time we got the interview, she was actually, you know, pretty nice. So I was nice, and I, I'm not mean, I don't even mean if you're, not, if you're not mean. If you're mean, I'll step it up, okay? But <laughs> if you're nice, okay, we'll be nice. <laughs>
is quite similar. If you uh, love God and you love other people, then you should uh, put yourself in a position where you can also protect them if they need it, to protect the defenseless. And that also includes a right to your own self-protection and your family or your property. And we do have uh, a uh, Second Amendment festival or Rod of Iron festival, I think it's called. It's coming up in October and be probably about 5,000 people here on the property on the 12th and 13th of October. Pastor Sean introduced his pro firearm message in 2015 and in February of 2018, not long after the Parkland school shooting in Florida, Sanctuary Church held a commitment ceremony. There about 250 couples gathered dressed in white, their heads graced with gold and silver crowns and AR-15s in hand to demonstrate their willingness to defend their families, communities and nation, many of whom headed to Tommy Gun Warehouse in preparation. It was pushed back from with, with, within uh, the church a bit because people were going, what is this? You know, we're supposed to about, be about peace and love, you know, uh, but we need to protect that peace and love. Now, Pastor Sean's message isn't embraced by all. And while some call pushback a side effect of non-traditional thinking, critics have gone as far as calling Sanctuary Church a cult with a conflict of interest. How do you divide those two, your role as a pastor mm -hmm. and your brother's business, which is doing very well in this area? Well, I think we look to John chapter 2 and we see that Jesus himself manufactured as a weapon. Mm -hmm. So he uh, it, made for assault. So mm -hmm. in the modern day, we hear a lot of talk about assault weapons. Mm -hmm. But at the time, uh, we see that right there when he when Christ uh, spends time to uh, manufacture the scourge and then he overturns the tables and actually uses it against the money changers who are in the temple. Um, so we see Jesus himself uh, use a weapon to chase out what he saw as evil uh, and the defiling of the temple, which should be a house of prayer. But today, many within the Christian community are left questioning if Pastor Sean and his church are misinterpreting what's at the center of this all, the Bible's text. We're not talking really about a literal rod of iron. It's a symbol. You can always find passages that to do your bidding if you want to hard enough. But then the question is, is this something that anyone would ever have recognized before? Is this, is this what these passages were meant to say when they were written? Is Pete Enns is Abram S. Clemens Professor of Biblical Studies at Eastern University. The Harvard University PhD has taught at several schools and written, edited, and contributed to over 20 books about Christianity and the Bible. He says politics shouldn't always be kept out of religious that is life. A, a very healthy way of looking at the relationship between church and any sort of political affiliation to call the powers that be to account when they are acting justly or unjustly. I would like to see churches call into account the government for mistreating marginalized peoples, for example. Now that's a gospel message. In a by few years, Sanctuary them, by the way. Church has called Newfoundland home. The church has done very well for itself, raising nearly $3 million in contributions in three years alone, a figure made public on their website. Today, their Defend and Build campaign wants to raise $4 million for a new church facility and training center. Moving forward and expanding, Pastor Sean says his hope for the next generation of Sanctuary Church supporters is simple. To be able to serve their community, uh, live for something greater than themselves, and to ultimately bring glory to God. That's what I hope. And so what was first met with some hesitation has been embraced by the supporters of Sanctuary Church. Today, believers like Kyle say it's been a learning process so that their vision of heaven can exist and thrive here on earth. It, it's really important to know that, you know, that the people don't necessarily, aren't necessarily pushing back. You know, matter of fact, we have a lot of, a lot of supporters, you know. Uh, and occasionally, you know, people come off, you know, just decide to come to church and see what we're really all about. Reporting from Newfoundland, Pennsylvania, I'm Casey Lopez for PBS 39 News Tonight.